Hello everyone and welcome to this week's video. Today we're going to be looking at ignition timing and how you can use ignition timing to increase horsepower. Now in my last video I talked about uh, chip tuning and uh, basically tuning the ECU so that you can create more power. Now this is a continuation of that video so if you haven't watched that yet that's a great place to start before getting into ignition timing. Now ignition timing there's a couple terms you probably want to know before uh, getting right into it so advancing the ignition timing means firing the spark earlier than you would uh, typically. So, for example, here we have our cylinder and we've got our uh, crankshaft here, the connecting rod, and the piston. And it's going to be rotating, the crankshaft's going to be rotating like this, pushing this piston up. And so as that piston is pushed up, that's going to be top dead center when the piston is at the very top of the cylinder. So, the angle that we've got here between what the crank shaft is pointed towards and the very top of the cylinder, that's our angle that we're talking about here. So advancing the timing, for example, would mean going from a 10 degree, uh, firing the spark 10 degrees before top dead center, to firing the spark 12 degrees before top dead center. So that's this line here. So you move it back a little bit. So you'd be firing the spark when the crank was here rather than here. Retarding the timing of an engine means you're firing the spark later. So if you were firing at 10 degrees uh, before top dead center and you then alternate to 8 degrees before top dead center, that'd be retarding the timing. So that's what I've got in green here and you'd be firing there rather than here, firing the spark to ignite the air-fuel mixture inside of the cylinder. So when you're tuning this, basically there's several things you want to keep in mind. You want the spark to fire so that your maximum pressure is created after the crankshaft has, has passed over and you've, the, you've reached top dead center and then your piston is coming back down. That's when you want your maximum pressure to occur. Now that's pretty obvious, I think, because you want your maximum force to occur pushing it down once it's in the proper stroke, so actually moving down rather than moving up. Obviously you don't want to have a great force while it's moving up, you're just going to be wasting power. So. That occurs basically between 10 to 30 degrees before top dead center is when you're going to want to fire it so that your maximum pressure occurs at about 5 to 10 degrees after top dead center. Now you're going to want the entire mixture to be burned almost completely by about 20 degrees, 15 to 20 degrees after top center. So after that's already come down here and the piston is on its way down. Now, with this, now 10 to 30 you're thinking, okay, that's a pretty big range, what does that depend on? Well, there's a ton of things that depends on, and that's why ignition timing is so crazy to me. It's, it's, uh, it's incredible and I have a ton of respect for the people out there who understand it, because honestly there's so much that goes into it. Uh, the type of fuel you're using, the engine temperature, the geometry of the engine, the RPM. So think about this, all right, RPM, if you're at a very high RPM, you don't have a lot of time for that flame to expand. So you're thinking, okay, well then maybe you have to advance the timing more so that it has more time to expand. Well, it's kind of not even correct in that sense because uh, as that piston is moving so much faster up and down, the air is gonna be so much more turbulent and that will allow the flame to travel quicker. So there's all kinds of factors that you kind of don't even think about uh, which engineers who are coming up with uh, these tuning methods are having to consider. And all of it is going to be on a, basically an equation rather than just a point-to-point -point method. Because you have to factor in at any RPM, what's your fuel type, what's your engine temperature, what's your geometry, what's your RPM, what's your air-to-fuel ratio. Every one of these characteristics you have to know at every single point in time based on, I mean think about that, like how much you have your uh, gas pedal pressed in and it's going to have different maps for when that spark is going to fire. It's absolutely incredible. But one thing you do want to make sure though is that you're not firing too early so that the engine knocks. So knock is basically an irregular detonation where you, you fire your spark and your flame front is started but there's a pocket somewhere else that's heated up enough where the temperature of the air fuel mixture is hot enough for it to combust. So what it does is, you've got these two flame fronts, and they're kind of battling each other, and, and it's, it's not going to have an ideal combustion, and so basically you could, you could ruin your engine uh, among, it could be a slight problem and nothing major, and you'll just hear kind of a pinging noise and you're not creating that much power, or it could cause some serious damage. So you don't want that to happen. Now, how would you tune this to create the most amount of power? Well, 
A good way of doing it, you hook your engine up to a dyno so you know at any moment how much power you're producing. Then, um, assuming that this engine has electronic uh, control of the spark plug, so each spark plug is going to have its own coil, you're not using a distributor where you've got uh, set timing basically for each spark plug. Um, if you don't understand what I'm talking about there, I've got a video on ignition timing. I'll attach that in the description. But basically you're going to want to have uh, independent control of the timing for each of these. So, what you're going to do then is you're going to advance the timing, so fire the spark plug earlier as the pistons lower down, um, and watch the horsepower increase. And then once the horsepower begins to decrease, you know that, okay, well, I need, a, I need to retard the timing a bit, I need to back off, and I can increase the horsepower. So basically what you're going to have is, is this curve where you've got uh, horsepower here on the left, you've got timing on the bottom, and what you want to do is, is uh, change the timing so that you reach the peak of this curve um, where you have the maximum horsepower and uh, it's based on timing. Now, what kind of uh, can create some problems here is knock. So if you're going to knock at say, say this right here, this point right here is uh, 15 degrees before top dead center and you know you're going to knock there. Well even though uh, maximum horsepower may occur at uh, minus at, at 20 degrees uh, before top dead center then you can't get there because you're going to knock at 15. So you might set it at 14 or 13 degrees before top dead center that way you're getting the maximum horsepower you can but you're not going to ruin your engine. <clears throat> so you're thinking okay well why don't manufacturers increase horsepower? Well, you're kind of going to want to have a factor of safety when you've got these warranties out there for these engines lasting 30,000 miles, 40,000 miles, 50,000 miles, whatever. So manufacturers are going to have a certain factor of safety so that they ensure that knock is not going to happen. And if you're tuning your engine purely for power and you're not concerned about reliability and how long this thing is going to last, then you may be uh, a little more liberal with where you place uh, your your timing so that you can have a bit more horsepower. So that's on uh, ignition timing and how you can increase horsepower. If you have any questions or comments feel free to leave them below. Thanks for watching.